This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Ops Genie by Atlassian. With Ops Genie, your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Visit OpsGenie.com for your free account. Welcome to Mac Voices Live. This is the talk of the Apple community, and folks, we got a whole bunch of the Apple community here with us tonight. Uh, this is probably the largest Mac Voices Live we've done yet. Uh, so if you didn't sign up or didn't weren't able to join us next time, watch because we're going to have a whole lot of fun. Um, as people come and go, it's a little hard to keep track, but I want to make sure we go around the room and introduce or give give our guests uh, a, a chance to introduce themselves before we get into the discussion of who got what for the holidays. Um, so I'm going to take it as it's on my screen for no other reason. Uh, Mr. David Ginsburg, David, it's good to see you. Good to see you as well, Chuck. Uh, David Ginsburg, I uh, do the podcast In Touch with iOS and been on Chuck's show many times. Great to be here. Yep. Great to have you. Um, Tony Crawford. Tony, welcome. I think this is your first live show on Mac Voices. It is. Um, I guess I got this from Bruce Mitchell. I don't know if you know him. He sent it to me. We were playing around with Zoom, so I thought I'd the other professionals here use Zoom. I live in the Villages, Florida. And I belong to the Apple Club here. We have 1,400 members. Um, We have four meetings a month, so we're very active. Plus, I go to North Carolina in the summer for four months. And I started an Apple Club there. And I have 70 people. It's a small community. So I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you. I did get an Apple Watch just a few weeks ago. So I'd be happy to talk about that. Great. Great. Well, it's good to have you. It's good to have you. Good to be here. Circling through again, Norbert Frossa. Norbert, welcome. It's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Hey, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here from uh, beautiful California. Uh, George Rubin, who I think, if if I have it right, is hanging out in Florida. George? Right. Uh, George Rubin with the uh, famous Nat, uh, Mac user group here in Naples, Florida. We have 400 members, not quite as large as the one in the villages. And uh, glad to join you for the first time. Oh, it's great. It's great to have you. Warren, Thank you. Uh, this, welcome to Mac Voices. This is uh, your first time on here as well in any capacity. Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've listened to you all the time and uh, figured i check this out. Um, I'm Warren. I'm outside of uh, Philadelphia, PA. Um, I admin a bunch of Facebook groups, but... Uh, created one called Mac to the Future, which is um, Apple-centric technology kind of Facebook group. Um, do a podcast um, or a live cast with Guy Searle and um, Dave Ginsburg uh, here and there. Um, and other than that, um, just kind of uh, drowning in my toys. So <laughs> nice to be here. <laughs> Well, it's great to have you. I, and uh, a fellow Pennsylvanian, I love that. I didn't realize you were uh, down outside of Philly. Yeah, where, where are you? I'm uh, Harrisburg. Oh, okay, you're on the other side. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. so there you go. <laughs> it's a big state. <laughs> yep. Thanks, uh, Frank. You're back again, sporting a, a, a very festive-looking beard. Yeah. Well, I'm trying some out. As like, look at that. My God. Plenty to fix that. I was going to get some of that spray stuff, but Ron Popeil, I don't think he's around anymore. Uh, I'm Frank Petrie. I live in southern New Jersey. I am exactly on the opposite side of Philadelphia from Warren. And I'm basically a Renaissance guy on limited budget. I like that description. I like that description. Thanks for being here. Uh, Thanks for having me. A, a, a very, a very cold-looking Dan Baruby is next. Dan, welcome. It's good to see you. Hello there, Chuck. How are you? And how is everyone tonight? Um, doing, I doing miss good. you, Chuck. So when I saw this, by serendipity, posted on Facebook, I said I got to join. So glad to be here uh, from uh, New Hampshire. Uh, I run the Boston Creative Pro User Group. Uh, boy, I forget how long I have and. Uh, I just moved to a venue here in Manchester, New Hampshire called Jupiter Hall. And uh, we are a multi-purpose venue for arts, culture, and innovation. And we also have filmmaker groups here. And uh, a couple of, uh, we do Bossy Pug here as well, um, my group and stuff. So 
It's a change. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Well, thanks for showing up. I really appreciate it. It's good to see you. <laughs> Mr. Mark Fuccio on my screen anyway is beside Dan. Mark, it's good to have you back again as always. Thank you, Chuck. Um, I'm here in uh, Bay Area, California, and uh, this is a little bit of closure for me. I was on uh, one of the, uh, I think, the first or second gift guide shows of the season. So uh, I'm now back with some of the stuff I've received instead of some of the stuff I've recommended. So <laughs> I'm anxious to see what they bought you. And last but absolutely not least, probably my favorite favorite guest of this particular show. <laughs> good, good to see you. Good to see you. Um, let's see, what is it? Green Halo? Do I have that right? Um, I think so. Yes. Is is that is that it, Daniel? I was I was trying to remember what your uh, what your tag was or your handle was. Um. What? Oh yeah, my um, username on Twitter is at do not record. Um, hello, my name is Daniel. Uh, I live in Lexington, Kentucky, and I'm a fellow Apple enthusiast. Most of all, you, I guess. Yes, and Daniel, uh, I, I got to interview. In fact, I've interviewed Daniel the last two uh, years at Mac Stock, and yep. he was wishing for an Apple Watch, and I think he got one. Yes. Uh, if you if you look carefully on on Twitter or YouTube, you'll you'll see his reaction, which was absolutely great. <laughs> Got the series three uh, watch, uh, Daniel. Yes. Awesome. Very nice. Very nice. Have Have you You've had this? Looks like he's just sitting. Sorry, say again. He looks like he's the senior among us. Yes. Is he the senior among us? <laughs> yes. I I, I, <laughs> I I think he has his beat by one or two years. Yeah. <laughs> So Daniel, I, I've I've sort of spoiled the, the surprise, but I'll lead with you. You you got an Apple Watch. You've been wanting that one for about a year and a half now. So how are you liking it? For the first few days, I think it's it's been all right. Um, I've went online and I've tried to find a watch band that my dad has, and he's been using that one for a while, and he's liked it. So I tried to get it, and in a, it came in the mail today. I've tried it on. I didn't like it too much. It was um. Um, magnetic watch band so it had a few holes in the in it so it would pull up my hair a lot so I haven't been using that for as much today so it's switched back to my old wristband um, but yeah so far I've been really liking it hmm. okay what is it was it one of the melanese loops uh, the, the fine like metal mesh yeah <clears throat> yeah yeah I had the same problem with those yeah well that's great that's great well, guys, I don't even know where to start. Um, how about if, how about I'll just work back in reverse? Um, Mark, what what did you obtain this holiday in the way of tech? Uh, a couple of things. Uh, the device I'm talking to now is uh, is an iPad Pro. Uh, in the past, when I've been on your show. I've talk, spoken either from my uh, you know iMac or uh, my MacBook. So uh, this is maybe a different setup. I don't know what the audio is like. Don't know what the video is like, but. Uh, We'll get a we'll get some feedback and have an opportunity to see it. So uh, you know that's good. You know, have both the uh, keyboard and you know the you know, the Apple Pencil. So that has uh, uh, it's been proven very interesting. A new learning experience. Uh, I'm enjoying it so far. Um, I really like the uh, the you know, surprise to me was I really like the uh, keyboard um, after sort of muddling through with the keyboard on uh, the Apple yeah, uh, 12 inch MacBook, you know, you know, this thing, although it's maybe a little bit lower uh, profile, it's a hell of a lot better, uh, you know, for typing on and gives you way better feedback. So, uh, I'm glad I sold the MacBook, uh, in order to, uh, you know, partially fund uh, the purchase of this device. And then the other thing I got, uh, it was, uh, a portable, you know, this is sort of like a portable Wi-Fi disk drive. It's a product made from uh, Western Digital called um, My Passport Wireless Pro. It's a two terabyte you know, hard drive, and it connects either via USB 3, so you can write to it directly. It's formatted in the EXT FAT uh, file system, so it provides great interoperability between Windows, which I don't use, and Mac, which I do. Um, <laughs> Or, you know, in a wireless mode, uh, it operates uh, basically as a small, uh, you know, NAS device. 
Um, so this is great for uh, you know loading up with video and uh, you know watching it uh, you know using the uh, using the iPad as a, as your own personal movie theater. You know, it also has a you know card for uh, you know reading uh, you know reading photos. You know I don't know if you can see it there, um, but uh, overall it's a great device. Uh, I it was available on Amazon. I suspect they may be going through a generational transition because $138 for a portable 200, uh, sorry, two terabyte NAS device uh, clearly indicates that they're probably coming out with a solid state, uh, probably one or maybe two terabyte uh, new device uh, later. So, you know, this is really great. And uh, I'm wondering maybe if, you know, Dan has uh, seen any of these devices, uh, given a lot of the you know, video and other work that uh, he does. Yeah, that's nice. Please send me the link to that. Dan the show. Yeah. Dan, you have you seen or used anything like that? Well, um, I have what I recently bought um, in November. It, it was my a Christmas gift to me. But a, a SanDisk uh, SSD. Uh, it's like a, it's about this big. It's black. And it's very fast. <laughs> yeah. Um, it goes into, uh, it's a uh, USB uh, three. Um, I don't have a, um, yet a new Mac. Uh, I have a mid, it's a testimony to Apple and longevity, although I'm sure they'd want me to buy another Mac, but I have a mid 2012 uh, MacBook retina, MacBook pro retina. And uh, it's been a workhorse and it's just, um, it's actually, um, on its last, on the throes of a uh, second life, um, actually, actually, yeah, because, uh, I had to have it, uh, this particular series had a, a defect in the screen. So, uh, I was able this past year to get uh, the whole logic board replaced. So it, uh, it just felt faster and all that. Um, but I don't have, uh, 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 Thunderbolt, uh, or, well, I have uh, the new, um, I'm sorry, the new uh, USB-C. Yes, that's what this right. is. I don't have that yet. Uh, I'd love to, but but I, you know, it's really nice because that's, that small sand disk drive, um, really, you can put it in your pocket. You can, you know, I, I don't want to say you can abuse it, but you can. <laughs> and uh, it goes anywhere. And uh, fitting with my laptop, it, it's fast enough for me to work, to edit, and, and uh, you know, download uh, or, store, you know, st archive storage from any video shoots that I do. Uh, I'm doing a lot of photography these days, actually. And uh, I was act yeah, I'm really thrilled about it. And they're, they're coming down in price now. I think mine's a 500 gig, but they do have, Mark, like a two terabyte version and whatnot. And yeah. uh, so, and then they have uh, another version that's um, like a pro version that will read and write around uh, like, uh, I think it's around 850 kilobits per second. Am I right, Mark? <laughs> uh, it, if, it's, if it's SSD, it's probably megabit per no. second okay yeah you know good um, well, uh, can you read it can you stream directly to it from a camera can i what i'm sorry can, can you capture directly from a camera to it or uh, is it uh um, slow to do that actually i think you can although i have not tried it yet okay um what you're talking about reminds me of um Oh, I forget the name of the company, but they just uh, recently came out with uh, a similar sort of flash drive that that you can use with uh, Blackmagic design cameras like the Ursa and whatnot. Yeah. Oh, then in that case, it's probably if it's SSD, it's probably eight hundred fifty megabytes per second. Yeah, you know, for, right, for it is. Uh, right, it's SSD. Yes. So yeah, the program. Yeah, no, it's really fast. Yep. This is this is a spinning drive, and writing to it, I you know, get about. Uh, you know, 80, 82, 75 to 82 megabytes a second, which is basically what you would expect from a small notebook drive. Uh, Wi-Fi, I haven't done a lot with uh, other than playback. And there I've seen things as high as maybe about 12 megabytes a second. 
Uh, it has uh, 80211 AC, so in theory it might do faster than that, but I really haven't uh, explored it. But, uh, you know, I love the form factor. Can't Maybe can't tell, but it's about uh, four inches square and not quite uh, not quite an inch thick. So this easily drops in a bag. And uh, if you need something ruggedized, you know, like, uh, like Dan has, uh, you get something with an SSD. So the beauty to me of this device is, it's a combination of, you know, you can connect it direct attached as USB 3, and that's how I load it up with movies. And then when you play it back, you can either read it back, you know, on USB, so it, you know, can think of it as, you know, an external USB drive, but really it's a Wi Fi device. So you can stream and. That's intriguing. Um, the SanDisk does not have um, Wi Fi in it, but we're starting to do a lot of streaming at Jupiter Hall. So mainly I've been going to like in, in the ability to watch movies on her, on her iPad or phone or wh- whatever she decides oh. to bring on the trip. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, my first zoom video experience. So interesting though. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what, you know, CES might bring. And of course, NEB this year in April. Um, I really think this year you're going to see some, uh, really interesting advances in uh, digital storage or digital content creation. And, you know, so it's, it's exciting, but I'm still holding on to my mid 2012 MacBook pro and it's, it's been kind to me over the years. So, uh, hey, as long, long as it does waiting. what you need it to do. Yeah, yeah awesome. it does. Right. Well, it doesn't, uh, all the 4k editing that I'm doing, uh, is not on this, but, uh, um, I'm waiting for another MacBook, but I don't really want to buy one now because I think they're coming about to refresh it in spring. Agree. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. And I'm Frank, also, how about, yeah. Yeah. Frank, how about you? What did you uh, pick up this, this holiday season? I received a hardbound book. That was okay. it. So what I did is you and I have been emailing back and forth about the speakers behind you. Yes. And so I went on Audio Engine's site. Now, I live in a studio apartment, so I can't – there's no point to me buying a big system. I'd love to get the subwoofers and stuff and power subwoofer. But since they had the 30-day return warranty, I went and bought their Audio Engine 2 Plus computer speakers. And I, I can't tell you how impressed I am with these things. It, the, the thing that's really amazing is not only does it have a nice wide dynamic range, but the bass is full and it's tight. I mean, it's just not boomy. It is crisp. And it's just an amazing sounding thing. So, like, for the last week and a half, I've been going nuts because uh, I like to use auto, audio file software. And they had a lot of uh, audio recordings on YouTube. Uh, some of them where they've lifted the, let's say, the vocal track or just a lead track. And what I do is I capture that with audio uh, hijack from Rogue Amoeba, save that as an AIFF file, and then I dump that over into my uh, audio file software. So I'm starting a collection that way. So... Basically, it sort of worked out kind of nice. You know, they didn't give me any electronics, so I got to pick what I wanted. Sounds That's good. The it. That's the way to do it. How big are these devices? Uh, the, uh, the speaker has got to be about eight inches by maybe four. And then I have it on those little stands. Chuck's got them. These stands, they put them up, I guess, 30 degrees. Yeah, that's about right. Something like that. Those and those only cost, I think, like 25 bucks for the pair. And uh, the speakers, I think, went for like 249 for the pair. But it's like, as soon as I hooked them up, I couldn't believe the sound. I mean, I can go around this whole apartment and I blast the suckers, and you get nice, like I said, amazing bottom end. And tonight, in fact, tonight, while I was messing around, getting ready for this. I was playing some stuff, and they have the ports in the front, so you get a better, you know, you get your uh, bass. And 
I had to accidentally put my hand in front of the port and I couldn't believe the amount of air that was coming out of that port. It was insane. For these, for these little things, the sound that comes out of them is absolutely phenomenal. And like I said, it, they give you what they call because they only have, I think, stores every 200 or 300 miles around. They have what they call a 30-day audition. So you can buy any of their products, use them for 30 days. You're not happy with it within that time frame, mail them back, you get all your money back. So it's like, how do you lose? This is Audio Engine, right? Yes. Yeah, they've been around. I've seen a, bu a bunch of their gear in different uh, video studios, uh, you know, on both coasts. And I think they used to spot you know, they used to sponsor a variety of podcasts from, from time to time. Well, it's where they, I used to be in bands years ago. And these, these sound fairly close to like small reference speakers yeah. that we used to, use to mix to. And it, it just, I love it. I, I absolutely love it. So I'm so relieved that you like it too, because I, I'm always hesitant to re recommend speakers, but the fact that you love them makes me feel good. Frank, how many speakers are in it? Are, are in each one? Uh, yeah, yeah, a little, uh, about, I guess, a one or two inch tweeter. You got, it looks like a three and a half inch woofer. And I think the woofer, it's, the woofer of the tweeter is Kevlar. And uh, then, of course, the bass is built in. You also have a built-in uh, amplifier in the uh, left channel of a speaker. And it's, it's weird. You can hook up, hook them up in a variety of ways. I have a USB right into my iMac. But you can hook them up to like a whole number of things. I mean, they give you a lot of options. Are those, are, are those in the, their color black or white? You can pick your, you can pick, uh, uh, let's see, on the, I think on the computer ones, it's black, white, or red. Uh, I ended up picking the white because, well, as you can see, everything I do in here pretty much is monochromatic. I don't know why. I've always liked monochromatic and just put a little color every now and then. So I got the white speakers, the black stands, because it matches my black iPad Pro cover, my black router, my black light, my black external drives, you know. If that's a theme, I don't know. Ops Genie by Atlassian is sponsoring this edition of Mac Voices. Ops Genie helps you keep your service up and make sure that it stays up by alerting you to incidents that disrupt things. Incidents occur. You know that, and I know that but that doesn't make them any more convenient. That's why Ops Genie alerts you to those incidents quickly so that you can respond. But who responds? What if part of your team is on vacation or asleep? Ops Genie lets you notify the right people taking into consideration things like holidays and time zones. Sound complicated? It's not. Ops Genie guides you through the process so you get their protection up and running quickly. Ops Genie also integrates with lots of products and services you are already using. Amazon CloudWatch, Datadog, Jira, and New Relic, to name a few. That means less time learning how to make it all work and more time paying attention to your customers and to your product. That's why you're in business. And with Ops Genie, you will stay in business because your customers will be well taken care of. Software is a central part of our lives, making things easier, faster, and more accessible than ever before. But when those things go down, your life grinds to a halt and no one has time to be ground to a halt. Right now, visit OpsGenie.com and sign up for a free account. Not a trial account, but a free account. And then add five of your team members for free so you can learn all about what OpsGenie offers and how it can help your business. With OpsGenie, your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Thanks to OpsGenie for their support of Mac Voices. So Warren, how about you? What did you uh, pick up this holiday season? I'm kind of curious to see what – I hope Guy didn't influence you too much. Oh, no, I influenced him. <laughs> if anything. Um, in fact, I sold him a couple things. Um, perfect. Just, perfect. 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 <laughs> um, so I, I usually try to 
keep current with most of my stuff here. So uh, a couple of big ticket items. I, I sold a 2017 13-inch Pro when the MacBook Air was announced. I bought a 15-inch for home, and then I got uh, the Air here, which uh, is my travel laptop. <clears throat> and uh, <coughs> the Air is nice. It's... Um, you know, it's it's not as powerful as, you know, a pro, obviously, but it, it's nice. Um, but a cool thing I got with the Air is something that I saw once on Kickstarter, and it's out, and this is called a line dock. And what it is, is uh, it, it, it was originally for the MacBook Pro 13-inch, but it worked on the Air, too. Um, essentially... You'll see it's huge. It looks like the size of a laptop. Um, USB-C power input. USB-A ports. SD card. Uh, a couple more ports. Another Thunderbolt. HDMI. Another USB-C. Um, but more importantly, battery. Internal battery. That could pretty much keep the MacBook Air powered for as long as I've tried it for. Um, where is it? Yes, yeah, it's got a... So, Warren, once again, what was the name of that? Uh, called Doc? Line Doc, L-I-N-E-D-O-C-K. So, and where, did you, where do you buy it? Where would I buy it? Uh, you buy it from Line Doc on their website. Okay. So they had a Christmas, and a Black Friday Christmas thing. Um, I think it was like 30% off their whole line. So they sell, uh, so it has a battery in there and, and, and you can get a M2 SSD cool. hard drive in here, which I did. I got a five, 512, I think. Two, yeah, 512. So, which is also user replaceable. If you take it apart, others have put upgrades in there if they want. So they sell the thing without the hard drive on the base price, I think, of three hundred. Um, then it goes up from there with the hard drive for five twelve, and then a terabyte in there. So um, you know, it's really not that heavy. Um, it's just something that it's kind of neat. Like if you're on a long trip and if you need the ports, it's cool. Um, and and as I said, with the um, MacBook Air. Uh, with 256 gig, um, I wasn't able really to fit my photos on here and everything else I wanted, my iPhoto or my photos collection. So it's on here. I connect it up. I put my uh, photos library file on here, and that's pretty much what I use it for to, to hold my photos. Sorry, did you say, did it have Thunderbolt or just USB? It has, um, it's USB-C. It's not Thunderbolt. Um, it's got a USB-C out, um, but of course it only takes up one, uh, the, the Air has Thunderbolt uh, in it, so it only takes up one port of it, so if you still want the Thunderbolt port, you just plug it in while it's plugged in as well. And it works on, um, uh, it will work on the 13-inch Pro as well, and it will work on a 15-inch Pro, but it's not fit, uh, the same, and the battery doesn't really keep it charged as much. So that was did a. Did it have an HDMI? It does. It has a, a mini display out and an and an HDMI out. So I'm so, intrigued. Why, why is Mark salivating so much over this when he just said he sold his MacBook? It, it's it's actually. I mean, it, it, it sold the air for me because I you know. Because I still have an air. That's why. Ah, <laughs> uh, huh? okay. Do you have uh what do you have the did you get the air or the Oh, I have a 2013 air so it has Thunderbolt and uh, USB 3. Yeah, so it's not going to work on that. It needs a USB C in on it needs a newer MacBook. Really. Right, but I'm sure they probably have other models in their product line. Uh, no, just or USB no? just USB no. that's third deal. So it's USB C uh which charges it. Um but actually, I think somebody did say you could use it. At, um, you know what? You can use the same one for the older ones and plug it into the USB 
port, it will give you the additional ports and the HDMI. It just won't charge the battery because it needs USB-C to charge the battery. Oh, well, the batteries, that's mostly what I need, but okay. But yeah. When you, well, when, you get, when you get done with the cost of the uh, <laughs> that plus the, uh, uh, the computer itself, mm -hmm. are you better off buying a Pro? Um, I mean, if I wanted a Pro, I would have got a Pro. I have a 15-inch Pro. Um, well, you wanted the extra ports then, it sounds like, also. I wanted, uh, my, you know, the goal for me was to get as light as I can when I travel. So uh, okay. I don't envision having to bring the dock with me all the time. It's just something that if I, if I think I might need it. Uh, I have plenty of small USB dongles. Uh, USB-C dongles if I just need something to plug in. So for me, you know, it's it's more of a, you know, take it on vacation, something in the airplane to get you, you know, a lot of time to use uh, with the battery. Um, if you need the ports, it's nice to have. But, uh, you know. So I, you said I, it had one, M, how, how many how many SSD, you know, the M factor, you know, the M format to the slots does it have one, just, so it's just, just one, one. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, they don't officially say you could do it, but you can. They don't care. Um, and, again, I've seen one terabyte on sale for, yeah, you know, like, 100 bucks, 110 something like that. Yep. So it works. Um, I also got uh, a couple of non-Apple things I really like. I got an Oculus Go VR headset. Uh, oh, really? And I got it on sale. Uh, Google Express had it for 160 bucks, so I bought that for myself. Um, it's fun. I mean, for a non-Apple thing, it's 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 you know, it, it's very much like Apple in a way because it's got the App Store that you can purchase. Yeah, this is totally the future, and I encourage anyone who's interested in VR to get one so they can. It's a perfect learning tool for that. It, yeah, so so I've been on this thing where I got. Uh, uh, so I did the same thing with the drones. I uh, I bought like a cheap drone, tried it, kind of hated it. Then I bought kind of the little bit more expensive one, and I'm like, yeah, this is kind of neat. Then I bought a DJI Spark, which I like and I keep, which is a kind of the entry level $400 drone. Now I'm like, all right, well, now I got to keep going up and up and up. So I did the same thing. So this is the same thing with the goggles. I got a cheap pair of like uh, VR goggles that I put the phone in. I'm like, this is neat. So now I got to get the the Oculus Go, which is really neat, and then you move up uh, to a Rift or something like that when you're really ready to do it, um, or or even worse, um, Oculus is coming out with a Quest model um, sometime soon, which is supposed to go in between the Go and the Rift, so it's going to be almost five hundred, six hundred dollar range. See what that does, but um, you know. The, for 160 bucks to uh, lay down on my bed, literally, I could lay down on my bed, put the goggles on, put earphones on. I and you get a movie screen like 80, you know, 80 <laughs> feet wide in front of you, or whatever, not 80 feet, 80 inches wide, and you can resize it, put whatever you want, and watch whatever you want. So I set up a a Plex server just for this, um, and I've been burning my DVDs um, to it. And basically, I could just watch movies on that thing, and just games, things like that. But the movie aspect is is cool. It's got Netflix, and one other cool app is um, it's called um, Virtual Desktop, where it's basically on only Windows only, but you could put a virtual, uh, uh, like a Team Viewer connection to it from the goggles, and it will show the screen, and you can pretty much do anything from the PC onto the goggles, and that's like anything. So games and uh, Amazon Prime Video and whatever you need to do. So it's fun. What was the price? Warren, what do you do for an audio, uh, for your audio hookup? Can, is it like Bluetooth? Can you use your AirPods, or do you have that hardwire? So the so I'll get to that. So the price is normally one ninety nine. I've seen it on sale over Christmas for one seventy nine, and Google Express had it for one sixty. Um, but it's back to 199. Uh, it has one, it has, um, 
I can't see them, but there's you, you can without any headphones in there, sound is coming out from the side. So it's not bad. You can hear the sound. But other than that, it has just a typical 3.5 uh, headphone jack in there. Um, you can use, uh, it's bulky, but people have used a Bluetooth uh, 3.5, the Bluetooth adapter. You plug right. that in and um, it basically sticks out of the thing, but you could do that and you could use any Bluetooth uh, headphones. But I found I found just a pair of old earbuds and I plugged them in and it worked fine. I was going to say, I have a set of like Sennheiser cans, some yeah. Magnums. They were 3.5. And I imagine you plug that into there. They've got a lot of bottom end. That's got to be a great experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you could lift your head up at that point, at that point, you got the thing on your face and the, the headphones and everything. So, True. you know, it's, it's, the goal is to try so to keep it right. What's that? They give you a neck brace with it. Yeah. You got to lay down. But, um, what's, what's yeah. really cool about that, uh, for, for adding audio to it. I use this, the Bose Soundware. I wanted to buy that. I I, I had perfect. it in my hand in a check back, check out. Yeah, it's yeah. You should get one because it's really perfect with the Oculus Oculus Go or any you know VR headset, whatever. How does I definitely recommend go, going for the Go instead of getting a, a headset that you slip your phone into? It's, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a day and night. I tried. I mean, I, I had the thing you slipped it in, and you're like, it, it's neat. But once you try something, what is so the Oculus for those who don't know is um, it has its own computer and screen. It, you don't put a phone in there. Uh, it runs a skin version of Android. Um, believe it or not, you could actually sideload apps to it if you want. Um, but there's no, you don't even need the phone or, or a phone at all, or actually a computer. Um, you might need the phone to set it up. Daniel, I think probably you do. Um, but once that, uh, you could pretty much do everything from from it. Uh, the phone, you could actually stream, which is kind of cool. You could stream what you see through the goggles onto the phone through the app, which is kind of nice because over Christmas, everybody was trying it. And I'm sitting there trying to tell them how to operate it, and it's, it's impossible. So it's, it's that, that was tech support. Trying to, no, got to hold down the, just hold up, and you're taking a hand, and you're holding them, and it doesn't work. And that's, uh, I mean, I got other stuff, but that's most of it. I've taken enough time there, so. George, how about you? What did, uh, what did you pick up this holiday? Uh, no, my wife bought me a watch, uh, a Series 4 watch, and I'm thrilled with it. And, um, and that was about it. Uh, oh, my daughter got me this T-shirt, which uh, she made. She made this T-shirt. It says the uh, the big mocker. I like it. I like it. There we go. There we go. <laughs> it wouldn't pass the uh, the Apple uh, quality test. I don't think. <laughs> Norbert, what do what do you uh, what came in your stocking this year? Well, I we had uh, I'll give you a Christmas and a non Christmas pick, and the non Christmas pick is uh, we were going through Costco, had to replace our home uh, phones, or just kind of going out, and uh, replaced them with the TG eight eight five. The number of Spam calls and robocalls and so more calls were just out of control. Do not call. I'm on it. Uh, no more robo. I have that call rejection. I have it, but they're still getting through. Well, this phone has a call blocking technology that basically allows it to not ring on the first time. So no more robo will pick it up. And there's also a setting where if it's a robo call, they have to enter a code, and if they don't can't enter a code, it doesn't even ring on my phone. So it's peace and quiet in the home, so that's a non-Christmas pick. And uh, kind of to follow Warren, I got a uh, drone, a starter drone, and uh, the amazement of being a child again to see it 
uh, go up in the air, bring it down. I didn't think I was going to be a droner, uh, but I really, really enjoyed it. Went out to the park, play with it for a little while. Uh, drove my dog nuts for a little while as, as well. And uh, just enjoy it. I'm going to try it as long as I would like and uh, see if I can upgrade a little bit up the up the scale. I'm not ready to buy anything anything big, but it was very, very enjoyable. That's great. No, I don't know that I've ever heard anybody refer to as a droner before. That's interesting. <laughs> what, what drone is it? Which one do you got? It's uh, it's the off brand. I think it's it's a Renegade. Um, okay. And uh, I I was looking at some videos on YouTube for DJI's and all the capabilities they have. It's nothing close to it, but it's it's fun. I like I said, it's like being a child again, and uh, just to see you know, be able to control this thing to go up and down. It's a little bit timid getting it too far away from me. And as soon as I uh, get it too far away, I make sure I put it down and go and chase it. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's, it's great. And my dog, my dog hates it. My neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. Different perspective yeah. of the neighborhood, different perspective of parks and little filming here and there. So it was great. That's great. That sounds like it's a gateway drug. I, I had a friend a couple <laughs> years ago when, when Radio Shack closed, you know, he, he bought a drone for like three, five bucks, and then they went back and bought two more, and uh, you know, <laughs> he's full, full fledged addicted now. <laughs> I think it is. Through my experience on drones, I've learned that the ones that are charged are probably the best. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Daniel, I love the way your hair glows in the light. I think I should try that. <laughs> I really do. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Tony, what did you pick up? Uh, what was in your stocking this year? Uh, before, if I could just ask you know, but uh, you mentioned sure. Call Locker. Is that an app or is that a, what is that exactly? It's, it's actually built into the phone. You have to enable it. Uh, oh. So you, you go through the menu on the on, on the Panasonic phone oh. and um, it's it's enabled. You have to actually enable it. Uh, but my phone just doesn't ring anymore. It's just great. Apps. Do that as well, right? I think. Yeah. Well, so what, I, was the uh, brand, what was the brand on the phone from Costco? Yeah, you got to link that. They, they only have one. Uh, I think they have this one has five handsets. Uh, it's the KX TG885. Uh, okay, that's fine. one for five. And they also have a three handset one. Um, but uh, but it has completely stopped it. I don't know how the spammers were getting through Nomo Robo and they were getting mm. through. Uh, they don't even care about the do not call list anymore. Um, but my phone just doesn't ring unless it's a person that's on my contact list and it has Bluetooth and all that good stuff. I haven't set all that stuff up, but it's just the call blocker is worth its weight in gold. Yeah, the phone companies, I think, I'm sure they could stop it, but it's good business for them. So they're reluctant to do it. Too much. Anyway, back to the question. I got a series four watch as well. I had someone gave me from the club gave me their old first generation watch, and I was wearing that. And uh, when the series four came out, it's such a huge improvement over every mm-hmm. other generation that I think if anyone's at all contemplating getting one, it's well worth it. Um, the one I got is I, I don't know if you can see it there. The black with the uh, sport loop i really like the sport loop it's it's like a kind of velcro that yeah. you can adjust so it fits very snug it's got a little bit of elasticity to it so it works really well apple is that says, wi- wi-fi or do you have uh your okay. lte um i got the wi-fi it was a great question because i did you know i I have all the other Apple stuff, and I said, you know, I'll pay the extra 100 bucks because that's what it costs for cellular. I'll pay the extra $10. But um, I ordered the watch, and then before it actually arrived, I changed my mind, and I said, I'm going to send it back. So without when it, when it arrived, I just put it in another box going back and uh, another label on it, actually, and uh, didn't even open it. So I, I now have the Wi-Fi one, which as long as oh. you have, phone nearby it's fine and the only time i don't have the phone is when i go to the pool and i don't think it's you know it's going to be a huge uh, impact on me not having the cellular for that point the problem with the cellular of course is you know it, it the convenience is nice you don't have to carry around a phone 
you can actually have a conversation with the watch, you know, just speak to it. Uh, and it's good enough for a short conversation. I wouldn't want to have a long conversation with it. Yep. Let's say on the golf course in the in days gone by, uh, the phone would ring. I'd run to my bag in case there was someone I wanted to talk to. I check the phone. Now, you know, the, the bag is nearby. I don't have to go to the phone. I can just look at my watch, see what it is. And if I'm not hitting a ball at that point in time, I can say a quick few words. So it's it, it's a level of convenience I never thought it you know it would have. The other thing that it has, I think you all know, is there's a lot of emphasis on fitness. And I don't know if you can see the rings on the bottom. Let me enlarge it here. But um, Let me see. There, there are these activity rings. It, it keeps blanking out here. Here we go. Uh, anyway, there's these activity rings. There's three rings which represent uh, movement, uh, exercise, and standing. And the goal here is to try and close your rings um, every day. So my wife, she got a watch as well. I got her a watch as well. So by, you know, just before midnight, both of us are waving our arms around <laughs> trying to fill up the circle. So it, it does it does actually act as a bit of a motivator. So, and the other thing it has, I think you all know, is the health, the health aspect. There's the rings. I finally got it unlocked there. You can see the three rings. It's yep. probably you, back. Um, you need to stand up pretty soon. You're not going to make your goal. Up. <laughs> I need to stand up and keep exercise. I mostly manage to close two rings, but the exercise is the hardest because you, you know, walking, just walking around doesn't seem to do it. You've got to do something a little bit more strenuous. But I was going to say the other key thing that the watch has, which is really interesting, is the health, you know, the heart. It can take your heart rate. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it can also yeah. take your EKG. I haven't done that yet. But um, you can take an EKG. And, you know, I think there's always this concern that people will get wrong readings or misinterpret it. But there's always a risk, particularly with the new technology as it's evolving. But I'm pretty sure Apple have done a lot of work to make sure it's as reliable and uh, sensitive as it can be. But the thing is, let's say, like I had a heart attack many years back, and let's say I had chest pains again, and it's not enough that I'm going to worry about going to the hospital. But maybe at that point, you can take an EKG and then send it to your doctor and they can look at it and see. Because right at the point you're having the pains, it's probably a good time to do an EKG, not a week later or two weeks later when you go to the doctor, because who knows what's changed there. So I think that's an area that's going to be a big boom for uh, Apple. And a lot of medical uh, organizations are tapping all this data because there's a huge opportunity here for capturing what the population is doing and what the deviations are from the norms, et cetera, and try and figure out patterns. A lot of people with arrhythmia, you know, regular heartbeat, uh -huh. they are able to uh, detect, you know, it's the watch is able to detect that. And in many cases, that could be a life-saving thing to detect. Anyway, that's it about the watch. I don't know, uh, George... George, and you had said uh, you you had one as well. Did you have any positive experiences with it? Uh, uh, yes, I really I really love everything it does. I haven't figured out all the hard stuff yet. David, have you? David, yes, I, mean, I, I have the uh, I have the Series Four, and uh, it's. Uh, have you figured out the EKG? I have, and it works. It's it's actually called not to try, try to correct you, but. It's called ECG. It's electrocardiogram. I mean ECG. You're right. Yeah. You're yeah, right. It does work. All you have to do is put the put the app in um, in mode, and then you 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 touch the the stem on the watch itself, and uh, it, it it reads it, and it gives you uh, your your heart rate, and uh, it'll tell you uh, if uh, if there's problems. <laughs> uh, I've seen. Uh, I've, I've had some problems. I've had some problems with the. With the fall going off, when I haven't actually fallen, just move my arm different ways. Have you had any of that sensitivity? 
It only goes if you're over 55. You're not over 55, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was no, 56. I just turned 56. You just turned, 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 yeah. turned it off. My wife yesterday put on her watch upside down without realizing it, and it thought she had fallen. And it was saying, should I call emergency SOS? So that was interesting. But the other <laughs> thing I should add is that Apple, and I, I assume this happens even if you don't buy the watch through Apple, if you buy it from, say, a carrier or whatever. But certainly I bought mine through Apple. And they offer you a half-hour training session. And all you do is you hit the button and you schedule when you like it. And in fact, my first one's tomorrow. I waited, you know, I have it for a few weeks before I wanted to talk to them. And because my wife bought one as well, you know, we get another half hour out of it. And I'm sure, you know, having called Apple many times, they're not really going to be time sensitive. If you've got questions and want help, this is what I find amazing. No one else, no other vendor gives you the kind of help that Apple gives in so many ways. You know, with calls, with support, with their articles, with their user guides. There's a lot of these things that are invisible to a lot of people. It's good you take advantage of that. One of the great uh, changes that they made from the Series 3 to the Series 4 that I've found is the placement of the microphone. <laughs> that they put it on the outside near the crown, where it used to be on the inside on the Series 3. And Siri is much more responsive uh, than it was in the past. Right. That's a good point. And you can see it's there. The yeah, not, just the other just great features, they got rid of the big red dot and made it a smaller dot. Yeah. yeah. I, oh, they did. I, I, oh, I, there, I, there I goes. Tony. <laughs> I agree with you, Tony, about the cellular. I, I just don't think it's worth the while, the cost. That's an extra cost. Yeah. I mean, I always have my phone with me. You know, some people may not want to have their phone with you with them, but I always do. So it, it didn't make any sense for me. So uh, no. I didn't see. I same. think that's a personal thing. Like I think, yeah. um, you know, you, every person is going to have a different view. Certainly, there's an expense. There's also another factor, which is it does drain the battery. Now, I find with normal use, I'm getting about thirty percent drain. So I could probably go two or three days, and if I did have the cellular, it probably wouldn't be a problem. But it does drain the battery, and it is an expense. But on the other hand, like I was at a party yesterday, and this woman saw my wife's watch, and she loved it. And she said she thought they were expensive. I said, well, some people would think it's still expensive. She thought they were over $1,000. <laughs> so when I told her she can get one like for $429, right. she's all set to get one. And she wanted awesome. the cellular, which is interesting. I said, you don't really need it. I well, I like to carry my phone and this will be just perfect so you know everyone's going to have a different i would have sold you for most people i would have uh, sold your wife's to her for a thousand dollars i exactly mm -hmm. most people we don't need to sell it. <laughs> those who do it's a good thing to have <laughs> george i like it george good good line hey we're starting to push up against time and i want to make sure we get david in for whatever uh whatever he was able to score over the holidays so david I know what you got. Well, I'm going to rub this in, of course, for you, Chuck. Second. Home pod. <laughs> Second. Did it make Second a huge difference in the sound? Uh, I, have I love it. Yeah, I've, I've paired both uh, both the HomePods, and uh, the sound is just amazing. It, it uh, I've got it in my office. That's where I'm, I am here now. And uh, I, when I, whenever I ask her to play it, something, it, the sound just is just incredible. Uh, uh, the only downfall to it as far as pairing goes, it doesn't pair, it won't play through the paired speakers through your Mac. You have to use your, either you use, uh, Asper yes, it will. Will, play it. Oh, well, yeah. will not. No, it will not. Yeah. It only plays through one of the speakers. You can't, you can't get it, the Bluetooth to tell it to go to the pair, even though I have it in the home, in, in home saying that I'm, I'm, that they're paired. I mean, for some reason, the Mac doesn't do it. I haven't spent a lot of time exploring why, uh, but, but, Everything else that you that you send to it from your iPhone, your iPad, uh, even your Apple Watch, you'll be able to uh, uh, you'll be able to play it uh, without a problem. So, uh, and yeah, that was one of the gifts. And then I I got on a on a big uh, kick with uh, with HomeKit. I got this guy. Uh, this is the Elgato uh, Eve Energy, and um, I got a couple others that I've been playing with, and uh, I'm really liking the HomeKit stuff with with outlets. And I've already set up a few in my house with in my bedroom and. Uh, uh, and uh, we had our Christmas tree hooked up to it this year and uh, done another lamp. So HomeKit's really a hot thing right now um, as far as that goes. Um, 
one thing I'll, I'll talk about with uh, with Mark. Mark, you had talked about the hard drive. I have this hard drive. This is an older one. Um, okay. Th this one uh, I've had for a while. It's Wi-Fi as well. It's USB. It's USB, but uh, they make great products. I'm just going to add that. I've had this a while. This wasn't this. That wasn't this year. So um, let's see what else did I have here. I got a. Oh yeah, for fourteen dollars I got a gift here. This is this is a beanie. <laughs> I can wear this hat, and it's got built-in speakers. They're they're Bluetooth and, and I'm able to hook oh. something on the side. Um, so if you see if you see the if you see this the connector there that uh, that allows you to, to to sync it with your iPhone. If you're outside, you want and the other side's got a speaker here. And if you're outside and you got your beanie oh. on, you can uh, you can listen to your uh, listen to your music, especially if you're out like plowing snow or or uh, just outside in general. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of these types of devices now, but they're putting Bluetooth. Uh, in this, I bought a mat. I had a mask too for for when I sleep, and uh, and it's got the speakers built into it as well, and a uh, lot, wow. lot of cool things. So they, so they got this. This was cool. It's like fifteen bucks. <laughs> but I think yeah. I got, we, we got it at Z, uh, like Sam's Club. So does, does Face ID <laughs> recognize you with the hat on? It does, <laughs> actually. <laughs> <laughs> David, a few days yes. ago, did a patent on a patent on uh, wearables with having built-in technology. Okay. I'm sure along those lines. So that's going to be a big area. Uh, one thing I'll, I'll show everybody, you, you have the Apple Watch. I, I did a screenshot. If it, when it hit New Year's, you know, the watch did do uh, fireworks. I don't know if everybody knows Oh, that. you're kidding. I didn't wait. That yeah, the phone did that as well. The, uh, the, the, I didn't see the phone do it. The watch did. I knew because uh, I knew. I, I was sleeping. Yeah, somebody sent me uh, uh, on, on messages. It just said, Happy New Year's. And it <laughs> automatically just defaulted to having the exact same. Uh, same graphic. Uh, I've seen that in previous years. This year, this yeah. year didn't have the watch on that uh, the strike of the bell. I, I, I had it on. I didn't. I didn't get it. I don't know. Yeah. One other item I'll I'll show you. This I actually got. Uh, this was a uh, uh, on the gift guide from uh, Frederick uh, from one of the when we when we were on the show. This oh yeah. The, uh, the the ba uh, the backpack. It was a it's a foldable backpack. Uh, Ultra pack. This is the card. This is the backpack, and, and this thing you can fold it up into a ball and put it in, and, 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 it, and it carries light. And then you just expand it, and it's a full out backpack, and you put anything in it. I mean, it's pretty nice. cool. Yeah, for having something as secondary, and if you want to, you know, take just a few things with you and leave the rest of your backpack behind your hotel or whatever. So nice travel. Yeah, those are most of them. Santa Claus was good to you. <laughs> That, that that backpack's cheap, I know. <laughs> You're a good boy, David. Comes from that neighborhood. I think Dan, Dan Baruby needs the uh, needs the beanie. Yeah. <laughs> um, I actually saw those and was considering getting one, but I. Uh, and the sound is actually not that bad, honestly. Yeah. What I did buy was a couple of uh, a pair of earbuds, but not made by Apple. Yeah. And, uh, uh oh, crap! And it, it, crap. <laughs> it works for me. <laughs> what brand? Know, are these are fun, so. I tried them and they didn't work for me. Yeah. Okay. What brand did you get, Dan? Yeah. What brand? What yeah, brand? I, don't, I don't even know if it has a brand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Bob's. Really off brands. Bob's yeah. AirPods. It only cost. Uh, I think it cost <clears throat> thirty-five bucks. Hey, granted, I know it's not going to be the same thing, but you know, I have to. Works, it works. I had to buy this over the uh, over the earbuds. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, David, David, George, David. Yeah. Did you say that the uh, the CPAP mat mask come with um, Bluetooth now? Oh, I have it. No, mm -mm. I have it. George, oh, I have one. You said. You, you have a Bluetooth uh, CPAP mask? I do, too. Yeah. What's wow. the use for it, though? Um, it, I, I'm a hoser, too, so. <laughs> so I have one. It, it, the Bluetooth, it um, just gives you stats on your sleep the next day. Uh, tells, you, tells you useless things about. It tries to figure out how much you slept. It tries to figure out if you uh, did the, um, you know, the... <gasps> At night, things like that. Um, so, but you can't hear mu you can't hear music through it or anything. 
No, but I bought like Dave instead of a hat, I bought a sleep mask that has the yeah. um yeah. that has the headphones in there. Yeah. So, because my wife, I snore. My wife watches TV in bed, and I can't hear it. So, I have the CPAP machine on. I have this the mask with the ear, uh, the music going. I could go underneath my blanket completely because I have the breathing tube with the CPAP machine, with the uh, with the music and everything, and I'm like isolated from everything. I you know mm. the, it could be like nice. you know the apocalypse could be outside. And I would have no clue at all. Yeah, Darth Vader like, mode. Sounds like, yeah, sounds like the Mike Steps again. <laughs> sounds like our Mystery Science Theater three thousand. Oh, every every night's a every night's a uh, is a party, man. <laughs> oh, by the way, these these are charged. If you can see that, there's a there's a plug right into the speaker and just yeah. USB oh. plug it in, and it, that's how it charges it too. You just, when it when when it runs out of battery power, you just plug it in and it charges it. I thought your brain waves might have charged it. No, <laughs> no. David, well. how long do you, does the battery last? Um, I've used it for uh, at least two or three days and it's been fine. Same thing with my mask that I like the one Warren probably has. It, it, it lasts about two or three days. Um, and you're using it. What, how many hours a day roughly? Um, this one, I ha- the, the, this, I haven't used very long, um, but okay. that's what the rating it at is about two or three days. If you were to use, I mean, I don't see people using this constantly. Like, like the mask right. I do every, every it, night. It's $14. What do you think? <laughs> it's a $15, but yeah. Oh it's, yeah. It's, probably three hours. Yeah. Yeah. If it, if its head doesn't catch on fire, then it's worth the fifteen. Bucks. <laughs> even the ma- even the mask like Warren has, I bought I bought it and uh, it uh, uh, it lasts a few days. So. Yeah. If it's not made by Samsung and doesn't explode, you're in good shape. So exactly. <laughs> yep. Oh, ouch, ouch! They'll never they'll never get over that. You know, there there's <laughs> permanent damage to their brand. No, they, don't the think, they seem to not think so, but that's other. <laughs> yeah. I have a question for Warren. On the uh, Oculus Go, are you experiencing, or what's your workaround for the short battery life? Uh, so, I mean, they I'm on the forums and stuff, and they say that you shouldn't have it plugged in while using it. Right. Um, for some reason, I do it. Um, so if I'm next to a USB cord, I'll plug it in while I'm using it. But I have, like, probably five or six battery packs from – my Apple stuff that will work too. Right. You know, I get, I get about two hours out of it without anything. And that's, you know, unless I'm watching a movie, it's, it's fine. Um, and if I'm watching a movie, I'll just sit with it plugged in into my head. Yeah. You know, I do so that I, too, but we haven't heard, I don't think there's been any cases yet of it exploding. Although in the news, I think a girl died from, uh, some, headphones or something that she was wearing that were powered up or something. I don't know. I didn't see that. I mean, I don't even know the reasoning. I think they say it gets hot and they also say it could shorten the battery out or shorten the life of the battery, but you know, it's got an intelligent battery. It should be fine. Hey guys, we're at time and I want to want to thank everybody for showing up and sharing. Uh, There's, you guys picked up a lot of things that we didn't have on the gift guide. So I will ask everybody to send me links to all their uh, assorted things. I'll make sure I have them in the show notes so that if you got holiday cash, folks, maybe you can score some of these things now after the fact. What did Santa bring you, Chuck? Um, The one thing that I really bought for myself, um, and I'll make David just a little jealous. I did get a second HomePod, and I really like it. But I didn't do it until the price hit two hundred dollars. So I got my second home pod for two hundred bucks. There you go. Where? Where, Where did you get it for that? Refurb. You know, it, it was a special. No, it wasn't a refurb. Actually, it was a special Apple. deal out of through eBay from someplace in the Midwest that I'd never heard of. Wasn't that uh, the back of a pickup truck or something like that? Yeah, that's no, a no, this guy. So no, did they actually no, ship it? <laughs> yeah, no, it it uh, did and not come did they by. Include the box. And you'll, uh-huh. Yeah, I, yeah, it was. I, I got my second, yeah, I got a second for my reefer, but for Dave and Chuck, just, I have also a uh, Sonos one that I won on a raffle or something like that. With the, Was the HomePod box full of glitter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, if you have a Sonos one and want to play uh, with the HomePod stereo, it sounds great for some reason. Mm. That's what I, that's what I heard. 
Yeah, it just uh, adds to it. it. It sings perfectly. So, so. Well, I, re- I recommended HomePod when I was on the show, and it sounds like both uh, David and Chuck bought it. So, well, I had uh, I had my first one, and if if you combine the two, I'll, I'll get Chuck even more jealous. I I got two for the price of one. So, oh, nice. ooh, gee, thanks, David. Mm-hmm. Take that connection. <laughs> gift <laughs> gift cards. I mean, you know, that's like, like oh right. oh. Oh, okay. So, so it was somebody's money. It just wasn't yours. So you're right. sticking with that story, Dave. I'm sticking with that story. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, nobody got Apple stock for Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Warren Buffett. No, no. Hopefully, they did at the lower price. That's yeah. right. That's it can't right. be lower than it was now. Good yeah. time to buy now. <laughs> buy an opportunity, or yeah, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. This has been a whole lot of fun. We will do more of these um, because they seem to be getting a good response. And and it's just a blast to get everybody together and just talk talk tech for without a whole lot of boundaries and borders. Sort of like a mini back stock, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices Live. Join us next time. And until then, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com. <laughs>